When the Great Smoky Mountains National Park was established in the mid-1930s, the black bear population had lost 80% of its range in eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina. Since then, harvesting restrictions have helped establish the bear population as one of the densest in North America. Managers estimate that 1,600 bears live in the park today. But while the population of bears has grown, so have human encounters with bears. Bear-human conflict is a major problem all along the Appalachian Range. So effective management strategies for controlling the bear population are critical. Currently, the only form of control on the bear population is harvesting. So what is the most effective control strategy to minimize bear-human conflict, yet still maintain a sustainable bear population? Dr. Relay Salinas is an assistant professor in the Department of Mathematical Sciences at Appalachian State University and a short-term visitor at the National Institute for Mathematical and Biological Synthesis. He is developing computer models to study the bear population in eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina to determine the optimal strategy for controlling it. So I'm creating a simulation model uh, that will model the entire um, bear population of uh, the uh, West, eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, and trying to test different um, hunting strategies and control strategies to keep the population at a level that's still viable and uh, growing, but minimize areas, minimize it in areas that might minimize um, bear human conflicts and encounters. So there's a concentration of bears somewhere next to some area, maybe we need to control it there and keep it, uh, drop the population at that level. And uh, my goal is to find this optimal sort of control strategy for the bears. Dr. Salinas developed a computer model that simulates changes in the bear population over time while accounting for changes in food availability. In this simulation, each black dot is a cell containing at least one bear. The pink areas represent national forest lands where bear hunting or harvesting is allowed, while the red areas are bear sanctuaries where hunting is illegal. If the current harvest rate of bears was doubled, this scenario projects how the bear population would change over time. The green represents areas populated by humans, and so the simulation also shows potential bear-human encounters. Park officials could use the model to help determine the best strategy for minimizing bear-human interaction. If they wanted to control the bear population in the park, um, this could tell them where are the target areas that would be most important. Is it the northwestern side, the southeastern side? Um, where um, is it always near certain populated areas? Is it maybe where there's less food? Irrespective of whether there's human density near it, it might be simply a function of food. And the population is driven by fall hardmast, which is uh, acorns and nuts, and those vary year to year. And so since that's driving movement and reproduction, that might be where they need to focus management as uh, related to where this food is, not really where people are. Fall mass production is vital to the overwinter survival of bears. If a female does not gain enough weight during fall foraging, she may lose her litter during denning. The amount of fall mass produced varies from year to year. Dr. Salinas's model accounts for projected mast variation. Dr. Salinas is one of several short-term visitors currently conducting research at Nimbus, located on the University of Tennessee Knoxville campus. Short-term visitors are supported for up to a month to assist their efforts in carrying out research at the interface between mathematics and biology. For more information about short-term visitors and how to become one, visit our website at www.nimbus.org.